My name's Brandon. I'm a world traveler, foodie, and YouTuber. Together, you and I will find the best travel hacks, tips, and best places to explore. Join me as we find new adventures together, live only on IBM.TV. Hello, IBM TV. Welcome, everyone. My name is Brandon, and if you haven't figured it out, today we're talking about travel. Uh, it's Travel Tuesdays here on IBM TV. You know, you got a little bit of uh, a little bit of travel content, a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm uh, a traveler. I make videos. Uh, I make all sorts of different kinds of content: podcasts, websites, blog posts, anything you could want talking all about travel, everything from travel tips, hacks, all sorts of great stuff. Uh, today, we're going to follow up on my first stream. If you haven't watched it, you should. It's available on the IBM TV uh, YouTube page and Facebook page. Uh, we're going to talk about airports. Ah, airports, the money pits of travel, a money pit. Uh Airports are crazy. Last week on the stream, I told you about a few tools that I used to find great deals on flights. We went through a few of my favorite tools uh, and tips when it comes to booking an airline ticket for a very low price. Uh, if you haven't checked out that show, that episode, you should. We're going to build on that a little bit today, and we're going to continue to build on that through the season here on Travel Tuesdays learning everything about booking your trip, organizing your trip, picking a destination, making sure you're ready to go on that great adventure. This week, we're going to talk about how to save money at the actual airport. Once you've booked your flight and you found your deal, there's another common trap that you, uh, you might fall into. It's common. Everybody falls into it. I've fallen into it. Uh, if you're new to the show, Welcome. Make sure you check out my website, LeeBrandonScott.com, and my YouTube channel uh, so you can get some more travel tips and hacks. Uh, so here, here's the deal with, uh, with live streams. It's live. So if you want, you can head on over to the IBM TV Facebook page. Uh, it's a mouthful. IBM TV Facebook page. It's a twister. Uh, you can leave one on the stream. It'll pop up here, boop, right below, uh, and we can answer your questions live and help you organize your trip live on the air, or at least give you some advice. So, flights. Here we go. Here is the first big barrier you'll encounter. Right? You book your flight. You've spent the money. Done. You've done your your due diligence, you've used the, the, some of the tricks and tips that I showed you in the first episode, and you found that budget flight or double flight. Now it's morning. You got to wake up and you got to get going to the airport. It's the day has come, the day of reckoning. Uh, Uber, taxi, friend drives you to the airport. You get there. What's the first thing you do? You probably already missed a step. Here's my first kind of recommendation or uh, you know piece of advice that I would have when you're getting ready for your flight check in ahead of time most flights will allow you to check in 24 hours uh, before your flight is scheduled to leave always 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 check in right away as soon as you can sometimes you got to wake up early in the morning to do it it's worth it I promise always be worth it uh, if you're flying airlines like Southwest that do uh, kind of free-for-all bo boarding, I guess, uh, is, I don't know what the proper term is. Um, if you are on one of these flights, you want to check in super early because you can usually get better boarding. You can board earlier, be in earlier groups, and oftentimes have a much better, uh, much better experience that way. So check in super early. Uh, Mark's looking for a super affordable rate. Well, Mark, uh, on my first stream, we talked about 
uh, some of some great apps that you can use to look for some of those super cheap rates. Um, when we can go traveling again, that, that's a whole nother story. That's I think that's going to be a whole stream. Uh, I actually just put a video up on my YouTube channel today talking a little bit about the future of travel. Uh, it's it's going to be a while. We're going to be looking domestic for a while. Let's say uh, perfect world. You've got your flight booked and you're at the airport. Uh, you checked in early. You checked in your 24 hours ahead of time. Uh, now you're about to walk into a great money pit. Here's the thing. Airports, most people don't realize. Many of them, they don't make money on the airlines pay them to take off and land. They're malls. They make the bulk of their money from you. Spending money at shops, duty-free, restaurants, Wi-Fi, all those charges add up, right? So we're talking about budget travel. We want to get you the best deal. You found a good plane ticket. Now, the trick is to just not spend as much money at the airport. But that is easier said. Uh, it's, it's, it's much easier to say, just don't spend money. When you're at the airport, if you're at the airport as much as I am, you're there hours at a time, sometimes 12 hours at a time. Sometimes, like me, you walk into an airport at 7 a.m. on a Tuesday and you don't walk out of an airport until 10 p.m. on a Thursday. Uh, you have layover after layover after layover after layover after layover. So the, the, you got to be careful when you're in these airports. Um, you got to be you got to be ready to to guard your wallet, guard yourself. Uh, what do I think of companies like Paycation and PlanNet? Um, so here's my thing on any sort of travel system. Um, always better. It's always going to be better for you and cheaper for you to do your own research and book your own travel, whether it's just for you or for you and a couple people, then it's going to be for you to jump into some of these services like a Paycation. Um, you know, it's, it's like similar to the timeshare model where you're paying money to another company to make a pit and to, to help organize the trip. So it's always best to just try and book everything directly, uh, book everything yourself and, uh, organize your own trip. Uh, group travels, a, a, a tricky thing too. We can, we can, I could rant for hours about group travel. Um, so, uh, here's, here's the deal about airports. They make so much money off of you. Uh, it's expensive just to exist in an airport. Super, super expensive. And, you know, I, some of these things are easy to avoid. Some some things, it's easy to swoop by. It's easy to, uh, you know, kind of pass by uh, through some of these tricks. Some of them are not easy. Some of these rules also uh, that I'm going to talk about, I I break them. <laughs> Uh, I'll be honest, this is going to be a do as I say kind of thing. Uh, but I'll tell you which rules I break and why. And why. Uh, if you're just joining us, my name this is Travel with Brandon here live on IBM TV. And we're talking all about airports. So let's step through a few kind of tips and tricks and hacks that you can use uh, while you're at the airport to avoid some of those common pitfalls. Let's talk about Airport hacks. Here we go. Uh, all right, Mr. Ankit, we've got a little. I've got a little graphic coming up over here uh, with some airport hacks. We're going to talk a little bit about them. They're they're some are straightforward, some are not so much. Uh, some can be kind of chaotic. But first of all, this should be a no brainer, but it's not. Bring your own bottle. Uh, it's free. Well, it may, you know, maybe it costs you a dollar to get the water bottle, uh, but bring your own water bottle. Even a plastic throwaway recyclable bottle, and not like a hefty water bottle, uh, bring your own water bottle to the airport because you can't take liquids over whatever, three point whatever ounces through security, uh, but you can take just a plastic water bottle. And once you get to the other side of security, you're not going to find free water anywhere. And I mean anywhere. So... Bring a water bottle. You can save that $3 for your bottle of water at the airport by a bottle and filling it up at a drinking fountain. Most airports even have stations you can fill up, like a little you know doohickey, you put your little shh, and it goes like that. Put a little water bottle in, totally free. Uh, if you need to buy a water bottle, three, five, seven dollars for some of these water bottles. So it's always better to just bring your own water bottle right there off the bat, even if you're only in the airport for four or five hours. I've saved you 10 bucks. 
thing you can do is you can pack snacks. Most people don't think about this. There is nothing wrong with bringing a snack through security. I had a friend uh, when I traveled, uh, back when we traveled, remember those days, all those years ago <laughs> when borders were open? Uh, I had a friend who would bring dried oats, like oatmeal, in a jar through security into the airport because it was cheap for her to get oatmeal and she could bring it through and have a little snack when she was hungry. All you had to do is add some hot water to it. You go to a Starbucks, Dunkin' coffee shop, just ask for a little bit of hot water, free, throw it in, there's your oatmeal. You can pack snacks. I am infamous for getting hangry. Um, I need food, as you can tell. Look at me. And wait in quarantine. And I need liquids. I, I, gotta, I gotta have it. If I don't, I start to get angry. I start to get tense, frustrated. Uh, and then I start to mess up. I start to flights. I start to add quick on airplanes. So I always bring a little protein bar and energy bar. And that's something I'm going to put like in my pocket that I'll have with me on the airplane. That way, if I'm waiting for food service or, uh, you know, waiting to land or if the flight doesn't have food service, uh, I have something. So when I land, I can have a little snack, okay, go out and get my Uber, my taxi, sort out what I need to do next and not be overly stressed. So bring a snack, bring a little, little granola bar. Um, you don't have to go quite as crazy as oats. I will, you uh, with stuff like dried oats, you'll get stopped at security all the time because they want to know what this powdery white substance is you're bringing through security. <laughs> but a granola bar is an easy, safe bet. Uh, pretzels are an easy bet. Nuts are great because they're protein, they're tea. Uh, they'll keep you going for a little while. So bring, bring your own snack. Bring your own water bottle and bring your own snack. Uh, even if you're just bringing, you know, you don't have to bring a whole picnic, but just a couple of little snacks, little granola bars. Uh, it'll, it'll go a long way to saving you money because in the airport, food is expensive. Food is crazy expensive. I mean, it really is. The other thing you should do that'll make your airport experience a lot better is talk to people. Is that so hard? Don't we miss that when we could have face-to-face -face interaction? That's why I love this stream because it's one of the few times I get to talk to people uh, without having to put a mask on. But talk to the gate agents. When you get to the gate, uh, chat with them. Uh, let them know, hey, I'm willing to be bumped, you know, for the right or I'm willing to gate check my bag uh, and do a whole episode on packing so that you can save some money and hassle and time if you pack well. Um, but, oh, hey, like, I'm flexible. If you need to bump me by a day and put me in a hotel for a night, I can do that. Uh, you know, or check in. Hey, do you have any available upgrades? Sometimes you can get one at the gate for super cheap. Uh, but you got to be friendly. You got to talk to them. You got to let them know what's going on. So don't be afraid of them. They're busy people. Don't interrupt them. But you know, you can walk up and say, "Hey, excuse me. I just want to let you know, I'm willing to be bumped for this flight if you're oversold. If you notice people on standby, someone's going to get bumped. Exactly, very possible. So." You know, don't be afraid to volunteer for a few hundred extra dollars. Sometimes you can get 700 bucks right out a few hours later or the next day, and they'll give you food and lodging. So if, if you're willing, uh, talk to them. Uh, don't go up and say, I'm not willing, but, uh, you know, let, just talk to them. Hey, I, I have a, I can, I can gate check my bag if you need it. Or, uh, you know, hey, I was just wondering if, uh, you know, you have any priority boarding slots available. Whatever it is, chat with them. They're your friends. They're there to help. Uh, it's it's an easy and overlooked thing when they're traveling and at airports it's early and they don't want to talk to people but it's worth it it'll always help um here's the other thing and this is more for international travelers if you're traveling internationally never at, listen never never i'm sorry i don't mean to blow your eardrums out never ever 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 change your currency at the airport don't do it don't I'll slap your hand. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Here's the deal with currency exchange. Uh, it's a business. Currency exchange stands uh, that they set up in the airport or is they cost money. They have employees. They need to turn a profit. So you're going to be paying the exchange rate for the currency and a fee so that they can turn a profit. It's not worth it. Always, if you can, Use your credit cards. If you have an international uh, a bank that lets you do international transactions with no fees, I'm going to do a whole episode on money. Don't worry about it. It's coming up. It's coming up. We're going to do a whole episode on 
credit cards and foreign currencies and ATM. Whole episode on it. Um, <laughs> and there's a lot to it because when I went to Columbia for the first time, I did not do my research on the exchange rate. So I was shocked when uh, I took $70 out of an ATM in Colombian pesos and got like, you know, 100,000 pesos. And I was like, seems like a lot. We'll do a whole episode on it. Never change your currency at the airport, uh, at one of those booths. Go to an ATM. You can go to an ATM in the airport. Um, you know, you're going to pay an ATM fee, but don't go to one of those stands where you can change currencies. It's, ne- it's always going to cost you more money. It's not worth it thing you should do is download or print your boarding pass everybody's got an app i am a big fan of apps it's how i keep track of all frequent flyer numbers and hotel partnership numbers and all those numbers and rewards memberships you have to have uh and we're gonna do a whole episode on that too see so that you better come back next tuesday at 11 um and the next tuesday after that and the next tuesday after that but if you download or print your boarding pass, uh, I usually do is I'll screenshot it. I have a I have an iPhone now, so I just go and take a little screenshot. Boom, got it, saved it. Because Wi-Fi is not always free, and it can drain your battery and your data. If you're going to be traveling internationally, uh, we're going to talk about some international data plans. But uh, usually, airports now are going to give you a half an hour of Wi-Fi for free. That it's going to cost you. Don't. Log, if you have to log on to it, don't log on to it. Take a screenshot of your boarding pass uh, and of your membership number if you need it and save that to your phone. If you're traveling internationally, also screenshot your uh, your hotel reservations, your outgoing travel, anything you might need for customs and, and immigration. Uh, that way you don't have to worry about trying to connect to Wi-Fi as soon as you land. Uh, Anka wants to know what the available utilities are at airports. Well, you're, you're going to find usually, I mean, you're going to find free uh, power, right? So you can usually charge your devices for free. Uh, no problemo. You're going to find Wi-Fi. Yeah, it's usually going to be free to an extent. It's going to be free for the first 15 minutes or 20 minutes, and then you're going to have to pay for it. Um, you're going to find tons and tons of restaurants and shops trying to sell you something. You want to try to avoid those as much as you can. But here's the other thing I'll talk about Wi-Fi when it comes to Wi-Fi. You can sometimes, and don't tell don't don't tell the overlords listening in. Sometimes you can find free Wi-Fi if you just decide an airport lounge. You go near one of those like Delta Premium lounges. You don't want to pay to get in, but if you sit outside, sometimes you can connect to the free Wi-Fi. Just saying. Uh, but if you have your boarding pass screenshotted. And your travel plan screenshotted, you won't need to. You can just pull up that photo, scan your boarding pass, and hop right on board. So, easy way to save a couple bucks there. Avoid connecting to the land until you, you know, absolutely have to. Uh, thing, and I can't stress this enough. Be nice. Be nice. Be nice to people. Be nice. Some airports do have private baths. Um, most of them will cost. Uh, you know, sometimes you can take a shower for a cheap price. Sometimes they'll have uh, lounges. A lot of times will have free uh, showers and bath facilities. I, here's my thing on it. It's never worth it. If you're going to travel that day, wake up, shower. If you've got a 14-hour flight, wake up or take some deodorant, some fresh wipes. You're going to be on a plane for 14 hours. You're not going to be sweating. You're not doing any intense activity. Land, freshen up a little bit if you need to at the airport. Go to your hotel and shower. I would never pay for those uh, personally. Uh, I'm a big fan of making sure that I'm, I, I, it just doesn't worth it to me. Some airliners now will also have uh, showers on board. Sometimes it's maybe worth it just to upgrade your ticket. Uh, and it's going to be cheaper for you to do that. But if you're nice to people along the way, you're going to find a much more pleasant experience. Because here's the other thing the the overlords <laughs> don't want you to know, uh, you're, profile uh which is doesn't even you don't even have to have a frequent flyer number just your name email and address uh are going to show up a regular profile for them and they can add notes into it so you got to be nice to people otherwise they're going to add some bad notes they'll know if you're a problem guest if you've had problems before uh so be me uh and kit wants to know which are the best airports around well i can tell the worst (laughs) 
uh, I mean, Singapore is a nice airport. Uh, I like uh, Charles de Gaulle. I like uh, JFK. Is not bad, actually. I like JFK. I hate DFW. I hate Dallas Fort Worth. Um, I hate Gatwick. It's clean. It's very clean, but I just I don't like it. It's just so. Eh. Um, I'm not a huge huge fan uh, there, but I do like Singapore's air, air, airport a lot. I, I like um, I like Singapore uh in general but you say airports too yeah i'm same uh i've stayed at airports for days sometimes uh i've been in airports where i've maybe stayed in three airports and been in the airports for 72 hours uh the best airports yeah okay okay i can support i can support your choices uh i I, the worst airports for me are the airports always have construction um any airport that seems like it's always construction every time you land uh, and I think the worst airport in for this is Dallas Fort Worth in Texas, because every time I've flown in there, sometimes within a month of each other, the construction has relayed out the whole airport. So you never can figure out where you're going. But this is why you be nice to people, right? This is why when you're checking in, drop your bag, you be nice to those folks. Because when they're, when that profile comes up and they say, oh, this is, he travels a lot. He's a very nice guy. Positive experiences all around. Likely to get upgraded. You're going to likely to get perks. Uh, you're going to be less likely to get bumped because they know that you're a, a, a valuable guest, a valuable customer. Uh, the best airport, uh, Anka's asking on YouTube now. Oh, how fancy. The best airport story I've heard or experienced oh boy um well i mean i've i've run through a lot of airports i've had to full out sprint through a lot of airports um i think probably my the scariest airport story i have uh would be it was on a flight in in north america i don't remember exactly where the scariest flight i've been on uh, we had storms and polar vortexes and all sorts of other things and i remember being on this flight I think it was an American Airlines, and we had bad turbulence. And I don't really get motion sick on flights, but it was bad. I was I was getting I was getting a little nauseous for sure, and I was having a rough time. But, I mean, and this thing was you know like a blah, 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 roller coaster going up and down. And I remember the turbulence kind of calmed down, so the flight attendants were walking up and down the aisle, uh, making sure everybody was okay. And then the turbulence suddenly got very bad. And the scariest thing about it was, believe it or not, I've never seen this happen before. The flight attendants, the two flight attendants in the in the aisleway as the turbulence was getting bad, uh, one flight attendant, I one in charge, looked to the other flight attendant and went, brace, brace now. And I was like, for that for us? And the two flight attendants went flat into the aisleway and were like crouching and holding onto the chairs. And I was like, oh, this is not good. I was like, if the flight attendants are... are bracing themselves in the aisle way bad bad fine uh it was super turbulent uh, it was so 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 turbulent we were safe obviously the whole way through they were just because they weren't seated and had a seatbelt on they needed to like lay down on the aisle and like cr like wrap themselves around chairs um so that's probably my scariest airport story by the end of the night, i was i felt woozy it was it was a rough rough flight but this is why you're nice to everybody right this is why when you're checking in when you're at the gate when you're on the plane be nice to people if you're nice to the stewards and stewardesses they'll just be like yeah you can just we can just move your seat and have that bulkhead seat you can have a upgrade seat they can do that for you sometimes you just have to be nice profile is important every hotel every airline anywhere you go they're gonna have a profile of you and sometimes they'll share a profile so if you have like uh, a one world oh, excuse me a one world frequent flyer number for american and british airways and things like that excuse me i'm getting dehydrated i'm so passionate about flying if you have a, a one world flyer and you're using it at a hotel um to get you know cross points or whatever the hotel oftentimes will be able to get have it'll pop up your profile when you're checking in and they can see what the airline said about you and what other hotels have said about you so if you argument with a hotel agent three years ago on the other side of the world chances are the person who's checking you into that hotel or that flight they they know they can read that now uh, they know if you're a problem person so if you're nice to everyone the whole way through uh they're gonna be more inclined to do nice things for you 
and help you out. So so good behavior is is important. I mean, it's good to be good to all customer service people, but in general, it's good to be good to people who do the flights and the, and the checking ins and the people in the tourism industry because it's a people industry. So it's it's definitely important to be definitely important to be nice, you know. Um, and I I think that it's overrated too, but it, it can be it can be treacherous for sure. Um, you know, people that work at the desk, they're checking in lots of people. They don't necessarily see you the whole way through bugging them, but just like a nice little like smile. How are you today? Be polite. It'll go a long way. You'll be, you'll be surprised at how far it can go, uh, for those, those agents. Uh, if you have to the airport very long, ask if they have a, a club called ground zero. Yes. Any club. If also, uh, friendly trick if you are at any airport and don't have a club access and you don't want to buy a day pass if you're at the airport for an extended period of time sometimes sometimes if you go up and you're very nice uh to the usually um not to the people who actually work at the lounge but people who work in the airport a lot of times they can get you in if you're very nice and you say listen I'm here for like, you know, 17 hours. My flight's been delayed. I just really, well, is there anywhere I can like lay down and take a nap? Sometimes they can pull some strength. Friends, they work there. At your place of employment, if you're fortunate enough to still have a job post-pandemic, uh, during the pandemic, we're not post yet. If you're fortunate enough, you have friends there, right? So you can go up to, hey, uh, you know, I can hear, you know, my work and he needs a thing. And you can pull some strings. So if you're nice to the airport staff, they can sometimes pull some of those strings for you. Uh, growing up as a kid, there used to be watch hours so kids could watch the planes. I don't think that's very common. I can tell you actually a lot in the United States now are very, very strict. Uh, I make videos a lot, uh, a lot of online content. So film stuff, I have my camera out. And I'll tell you what, I've, you get yelled at that a lot now because uh, because of 9-11, since 9-11, um, you know, I remember years ago I was at Boston uh, International, Boston Logan Airport, uh, which is where the planes took off from, from 9-11. And I had my little GoPro up and I was filming something of the, of the um, like of the planes, you know, up at the gate. And within five minutes, security was there. And they're like, you need to turn that off. Absolutely not. You can't. It's illegal to film or against policy to film the airfield no way jose so i would be surprised if they saw to watch where you could get close to seeing the action um they don't they, they they try to keep that under wraps a lot now especially since 9 11 uh club zero has bunkers for people to rent by the hour to sleep in they do uh, and a lot of um uh a lot of that is starting to get super popular now in the states it's been popular in asian countries the kind of pods by the hour um I don't have any strong feelings about them. I like the idea of it. It's nice to take a nap. Uh, I'm so old and bitter when it comes to travel. I've done it so many times. I have no problem spreading myself out on a bench, you know, at a, at a and just conking out for a few hours. I have no no qualms about that at all. Uh, and uh, I even have um, <laughs> I have a whole technique of how I kind of wrap my bag through my so that you know i feel safer that way um but yeah if you if you want if you're interested in a pod to rent by the hour that's certainly something that would be worth it i would do that before i would pay for uh you know a lounge for a day or for uh wi-fi or anything anything like that um so ear popping good question mark ear popping my sister's bad with this um i would say when it comes to so mark's asking uh what your t my tips are for ears popping when you can't adjust to the altitude landing or taking off or sometimes even in the air um so you can buy products to, for that um some people say you chew gum um to kind of keep like mm, the fluid in your in your doohickey no anatomy the little drainage tube from your ear um that's what causes the popping cuz the fluid and it can't adjust to the pressure so my sister uh, chewed gum and it never worked for her. And then she found that if she chewed ginger root, it would work. I don't know if that's anything to do with the ginger, but I think it's the harder substance to work out that jaw. Um, I have flown with sinus infections before because I've had to for work and that's super painful. Um, so you can buy earplugs that are supposed to help with some of that. Uh, you can buy gums. Uh, you can 
do things like ginger root um thing you, you know you have to kind of find what works for you uh when it comes to that and those are the things where i would say if there's one lesson you can take away bring them to the airport don't buy them at the airport plan ahead because when you're your pack of gum or your fancy earplugs for your thing you're gonna spend twice what you would spend at a at a drugstore not at the airport uh things like that if you if your ears do pop and you want to bring gum and a couple things to try buy them before you get to the airport uh and bring them in with your water bottle and your snacks because it's it's going to be way more cost effective for you to do it that way and then you'll have the money to spend on your pod at a club zero or your shower if you want to shower or your wi-fi if you need to do that so you know, plan ahead a little bit. So we're going to take a quick break. We're about halfway through. After the break, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the rules that I break because I I gave you some rules and I break some of them. Uh, So do as I say, not as I do. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about some of the rules I break uh, when I travel. Mr. Ankit, I'll let you take it away. BMTV and free to subscribe to my YouTube channel where I'll give you some great travel tips and advice. There's nothing quite like snapping that photo at sunset in Paris, trying great coffee in Colombia, or adventuring around Spain having a great sunny day. Even if you want to travel domestically, from budget travel guides in New Orleans, New York, Paris, and London, to luxury travel guides and everything in between, travel can be so much fun and so much more affordable than you think. I hope you're having a great time watching me here live on IBM TV. I have a ton of fun making Travel Tuesdays Travel with Brandon, and I hope you're having a lot of fun watching. If you're enjoying what you're seeing, swing by my YouTube channel. You can find my YouTube channel full of great travel tips, some travel hacks, some food recommendations, city guides, bunch of travel tips, and so much more. Subscribing on YouTube is free to do, and it helps support me and continue making great travel content for you to see. You can also visit me online at thebrandonscott.com where you can get even more travel advice, some great links, and some in-depth breakdowns of trips I've taken and trips you can plan. It's a great way to find a little bit of inspiration for your next adventure and some travel tips. I've got cities both domestic and international that you can check out, find the best places to eat, the best things to see, the best things to do, and how to do it all affordably. Whether you want to stay at Airbnbs or five-star luxury hotels, there are great ways you can do all of those things on a budget. Swing by my YouTube channel, give that big red subscribe button some love, and don't forget to visit thebrandonscott.com for even more travel tips. From great photos in Paris, to awesome food in Spain, to wild adventures in Colombia. If you want to adventure and you want to see more, this is the place to do it. Uh, now back to, I guess, live me on IBM TV. Enjoy Travel Tuesdays and travel with Brandon. I 
Jeeth recorded me. That was awesome. Uh, I love, uh, I, we had a little audio glitch there and I love it because now you have to hop up to my YouTube channel to hear what I was saying in the first half of that. So see, it's cross promotion. It's, cro it's cross promotion. Look at that. Uh, so so the stuff, uh, first, before I kind of get into it, I want to announce a, a little a little thing I'm super proud of. I just launched a new line uh, on my website, a new travel line called the Explore line. I'm wearing it today. Look at that. Explore. It's got a little paper airplane. Super fancy. Uh, if you want any of that stuff, you can head over to my website and grab some. I got bags, your perfect personal item for, uh, you know, travel. If you need a little pillow, a travel size pillow, I got everything you can want. So head on over there, check out some of those new uh, Explore line products. So if you're just joining the stream, my name is uh, Brandon, and today we're talking about travel, hacks, tips, tricks, all sorts of things live on IBM TV. We're only we're about 20 minutes to go, so if you're just jumping in, uh, feel free to leave a comment. You can leave a comment on the YouTube channel. You can leave a comment on the IBM TV Facebook page. Uh, so Anne is asking why flights over the Atlantic are always difficult comparing to over the Pacific. I, I don't know if this is true, but I've been told it's because of the winds. That's what I've been told because it burns more jet fuel and more it's like harder I guess to fly against the wind I don't know if that's true that could be a total lie that's what I've been told could be wrong uh could you know <laughs> hard to say flying against the jet stream I guess there's a jet stream somewhere I don't I don't know meteorology but I've been told that's why it is um but if you use some of these tips you can help kind of uh avoid some of those expensive uh, expensive pricey places mark says those restaurants are expensive at the airports any airports that have good food at a cheap price well mark i've got some bad news for you a lot of airports will have great food you're not going to find it at a great price but that's one of the rules i break that is this is this is, we're talking a little bit about some of my rules and some of the rules i break i eat at airports a lot um I, not every time i fly but often um, I, I bring snacks for sure, but eating at airports is, I, I break that rule all the time. Uh, Jim wants to know why my tips are common knowledge. Well, because not everybody has subscribed to my YouTube channel yet and not everybody is watching IBM TV yet, but with enough weekly broadcasts and enough people following up on some of that content on my website, it's, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. But here's the deal. These things are businesses and they want, they need to make money. Um, you know, kind of a, a, a gag is, and Kimberly can tell you this as, as she's reminded me a few times that her family is, we used to be travel agents, like 70% of the airline's rates are not published publicly. They're internal rates for travel agents, for travel agencies. So you got to do a little digging. Um, but I do, I do break my own rules. I do eat at airports a lot. And here's why I'm, I'm a, I'm big, <laughs> I'm not, but I, you know, I like to eat. And snacks are great and they get me through. But after about six, seven hours of being in an airport, I need a meal. I want to sit down. I want to have a little glass of wine. I want to have something delicious. Oh, Jim likes the chess background. Is this chess? I have chess. You mean my little doohickey? These are my little my little recording doohickeys. The audio sounds better. There's They're acoustic foam. I've got them all over this room. Uh, there used to be one right there. You can... You can see oh, my head's in the way. You can see there used to be one right there, but it fell down. Um, they're they're chess themed just for you, Jim, uh, <laughs> and they make me sound a little bit better. Um, so so, I mean, food in airports is expensive. Mark, you're right. Um, you're you're gonna you're gonna find some expensive stuff, but if you're at the if see you like the pillow, I like the pillow too. Isn't that nice? Isn't that fair? Look at that, and so comfortable and soft. And you can order one today. Um, uh, hop on over to my website. So uh, you know, when you're when you're at the airport, you got to be really careful about where you go to eat. Uh, you know, you can do your fast foods; uh, they'll be cheaper. Um, still gonna be a little bit more expensive than fast food would be outside of the airport. But you know, like a nice glass of wine and sit down dinner uh, after a long day of flying or during a long layover, I think really help. Um, so here's, here's if you're going to do it, if you're going to eat at an airport, so I'm sorry, I'm still answering Mark's question. Oh my God. Uh, is it easier to fly east or west? Depends on when you're flying. It totally depends on when you're flying. Um, Price-wise. As far as turbulence, yeah, I don't know. The whole 
going through climate change, so it's hard to say. Um, Price-wise, it, it depends on when you're flying. If you're flying um, on the weekends, it's almost always going to be easier to go east because most people are going home for the weekends or, or like after their you know business travel. So weekdays are just always going to be better for you to fly either direction. Um, but when it comes to eating, like Mark was saying, it's hard to find uh, a, an affordable place that does well. So here's kind of what I do. I uh, I would say uh, avoid your fancy sit-down restaurants, sort of like Gordon Ramsay knockoff or who's the other guy with his spiky hair. Any of those places that they have like their fancy chefs, just ignore. Find a nice Irish pub. Find a nice bar with some finger foods. Pop in, you know, have a pint if you'd like or have... Uh, you know, uh, maybe just like some mozzarella sticks, just something warm to kind of relax you. Uh, the time zone. Well, that's true. So I'm talking a little bit more about price. I guess when it comes to time zones, it's it's much easier to go backwards. Is that backwards? How do you, what's the best way to phrase that? Backwards, forwards? It's much easier to come like back to the to the West than it is to go, I think because of the time zones but you know that's me. um the best time to take an international flight I, I always go for weekday during the night always weekday during the night a it's easier to adjust your sleep schedule to do b it's going to be cheaper during the weekday uh and c there's usually less chaos at night the airports are going to be quieter easier to navigate easier to get through um but I mean, I break these rules a lot. Uh, I, I don't really break the flying rule a lot. I usually, when I'm booking my own travel, I will pick a weekday. Mondays are great. Wednesdays are great. Uh, once you get to like Friday, Thursday, Friday, it's going to be a little more pricey because that's when the business travelers are going home. Uh, so there's more traffic. Oh, excuse me. I think with a live stream, I, now I'm, 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 my water is making me burpy. Uh, so when you're when you're ready to eat at the airport, I think it's important to... You know, find like that nice, easygoing place, that kind of finger food place. A little step up from fast food, but I do that a lot. I definitely do that a lot. The other rule I break is the whole water bottle thing. <laughs> this is it's so embarrassing, but I lose my water bottle all the time. I've bought nice water bottles. I even bought a water bottle that had leopard print on it, and I put glitter on it so I could see it from a distance and know it was my water bottle lose my water bottle all that doesn't matter i'll have it for five minutes i'll set it down somewhere i'll forget and walk away so usually what is i'll bring my water my empty water bottle through security and i'll get to this out of the gate i'll put it down somewhere gone forever i'll never i'll never again i'll never put it down and i'll always end up buying water i'll always do that i i don't know why i don't know why i do that but i i'm just horrible about keep of a water bottle i think it's because i've got so many other things that i've got you know my passports and papers and bags and you know all sorts of stuff i think that's what maybe if i took maybe if i took my fancy personal item explore bag boom maybe if i took that i could put my water bottle in there it's polyester so i don't have to worry about it spilling and could that see maybe i could do that and I keep my water bottle. Thanks, Jim. I'm glad you like some of the tips. Uh, airports are hard, man. Airports are crazy. Airports are places where um, you experience a lot of emotion. Do you ever think about that? Airports are like therapy. <laughs> Because you get excited when you're going to a new place. You're happy. You're ready. Sometimes you're nervous to fly. Sometimes you're angry about delays. You're, you know, you can go through a lot of emotions at airports. So you kind of know how to navigate your airport. Um, I, I've to the same in and out of the same airports a lot. Um, I fly back into the states, into San Antonio, Cleveland, and Sarasota. I've flown into those airports a lot, so I know my places i know where to go. i know where the best isolated places to charge my phone and take a nap i know where the you know where i'm gonna go for food uh stuff like that um the other thing that's hard i think at airports is they're just they're designed to confuse you um gatwick is a good example of this london gatwick is very very good at getting you to spend more money because you check in you walk through duty free it's it's light there's people all around to help you shop uh it's very easy to spend some money there if you're through you get through duty free you didn't spend any money 
acted good, you get out to the other side, they're not going to tell you what gate your flight is taking off from until like a half hour before your flight takes off. So if you're there and you've got an hour to kill, you're going to spend most of that hour in the central shopping area, looking at the screen, waiting to see what gate you need to go to. And that makes it so easy to spend some money because you're going to spend an hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. You're going to spend a while in that kind of central. If you've ever flown into Gatwick, they have like a central seating area and the upper level has all these restaurants and lounges and the bottom level has all these restaurants and shops and they got big screens everywhere. But it's like it's right before your flight starts boarding that they'll finally tell you where to go because they want to keep you there as long as possible to spend as much money as possible so you gotta you gotta be careful (laughs) because it's easy to spend money there um fun side note not to go too much of a but the one time i was almost deported (laughs) because i didn't have a valid passport for entry to a new country that i was flying into was at London Gatwick. I had to. I was sitting in that central area at London Gatwick. Call. I think I called my dad and my sister, and I said, "Hey, uh, I'm about to land in, in France in this country. I don't have a valid passport to get in, so I might be deported. Don't know. I'll call you in a day and let you <laughs> let you know what happens." Um, so that, if you want more to that story, check out my lost passport YouTube video. I detail what to do when your passport gets stolen overseas and how to resolve it. Uh, spoiler alert: it is not easy to do. Um, so you can check out that video if you if you want a little bit more on that story. But uh, those airports they're really designed to to keep you into the area where you're going to spend money uh, and make you spend it. And you know, I'm I'm I love Nando's. Uh, you know, some great. Uh, you know, food at airports, but it's never worth it. Kim says some places have great shopping, but don't buy don't buy anything from shops at the big hard. Yeah, uh, food I can I can cut you some slack on. You might need a nice meal, but any retail outlet you're gonna pay more for your product when you're there. And like Kim says, you can't return it because you have to buy a plane ticket to go back into the airport uh, to, to make that return. Uh, it's never worth it to buy something from a shop. The places that sell luggage, the places that sell makeup, the places that sell headphones and whatever, never worth it. Um, I, I'm a big fan of that. I actually bring uh, three kinds. I bring a backup headphones with me because I love my music on my planes. So uh, I will bring, I wear, I take these because these are great. They're noise canceling. So I put them on and that's my phones. But I have a, a backup pair, which are wired earbuds that I can plug in backups because I also have my AirPods, which the battery might die and stuff like that, but never, ever worth it to buy retail uh, tell stuff at an airport. Uh, will a spare passport help? Well, here's the thing about spare passports. They're hard to get. You have to prove... Uh, a, a need to travel if you want you can get most people don't know this you can get two passports at once uh, in the united states we can file for a second passport, uh, active passports um, you can do that it's very very hard to do uh, most people can only get away with it because they have their passport out for a visa they have an immediate business need or emergency need to travel and for a second passport um, it's hard to get approved for those i know a lot of people that have applied and have not gotten them um, your old passports passports that have a little hole punched in them this is my real passport this passport believe it or not you should go watch this video it's a whole it's a story this passport cost me about two thousand dollars and took me about a month of rushing around different embassies different cities and different cities and i mean i went everywhere to get this thing um having one of the old passports with it doesn't really help because they can't. It, it doesn't do anything. That's a passport somebody could steal and could just take and go and say, "This is me," but it's got the whole punch. It's not valid, so they'll turn you away right away with that. Do you have a clinic or medical? Yeah, most most airports will have. So at the very least, even your smallest airport is going to have some sort of emergency responder. Um, not a place you're going to go for like a checkup, but uh, if you need medical attention. They're going to have trained people on site who can give it to you. Um, at least give it to you until. Uh, proper uh, trained professional show up. Most big airports will have paramedics uh, on site uh, uh, as well, so you, you know you're pretty well covered there. Um, but other other kinds of, like there, if if you're at an airport, don't go get. You know what drives me nuts? I know I'm I sh- I'm on a tangent now. 
hair salons in airports. Do you know that's a thing? If you don't know that's a thing, there are airports where you can go get your hair cut. They got a barber shop in there. It drives me nuts. Why plan your travel so poorly that you couldn't get your hair cut three days, four days, a week before you traveled, that you would spend the extra money to go get your hair cut at an airport? Um, stuff like that. It's like, it's just not worth it. Uh, even if you're traveling full time and I traveled full time for about four years, you plan it. You gotta, I'm going to be traveling for the next two weeks straight. Great. I'm going to get my hair cut before I go get, get my dentist, whatever I need to do, because it's not ever worth spending that extra money in the airport. Um, that's, I think about all the time we have for show today. I appreciate for those of you who have joined everybody who left comments, uh, and asked questions. That's awesome so much for doing that uh keeping me <laughs> keeping me going on different tangents and uh yeah if you want some cool explore gear you can get it at my website thebrandscott.com slash store uh just go there and first thing you'll see is is some of the swag and merchandise uh or you can subscribe to me on youtube it's free to do great way to support me and learn a lot more you can learn more about that story i was telling you about the whole passport thing i got a whole deep whole thing there um, and it, it was literally months of me at like 3 a.m. through the streets of some foreign city with all my bags, trying to point the camera at myself and talk. It's It was a lot to do. Um, and I also needed to get uh, <laughs> at the same time. So it was a lot of drama. Um, emergency passports to full passport visa, to powers of attorney. It's a lot. So uh, you go over there, subscribe to me on YouTube, check out my website for more travel tips, hacks, and uh, just some fun stories. We're, we're going to reminisce a little bit. When we can travel again, uh, you'll have some inspiration for that. Uh, I am going to be doing a whole episode coming up, probably towards the end of September here, on what the future of travel will be uh, post-pandemic. What are we looking at? What is, what is going to happen? We're still talking now like it was the heyday. Like it was the days when you could travel freely uh, and giving you some basic tips. But we're going to build you up. We're going to get you some basic tips for what travel is normally like. Uh, and then the month we're going to talk about just the chaos <laughs> of the pandemic. Uh, and uh, I can I can say definitely chaos because it's, I mean, I was evacuated from a country in 12 hours. So I, I, it's chaos. But we'll talk about it at the end of the month. But let's get the basics. We're going to build you up, give you some basic tips and advice. Uh, don't forget to hang around here on IBM TV for the next show with, uh, well, gosh, I should know this. Uh, Henning Morales is going to be next on IBM TV. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting my channel and my content. And I hope you guys have a lovely Day morning. Be inspired to travel, uh, but stay at home and wear your masks. But be inspired and have a lovely, wonderful Tuesday. Thank you so much, everybody. My name's Brandon. I'm a world traveler, foodie, and YouTuber. Together, you and I will find the best travel hacks, tips, and best places to explore. Join me as we find new adventures together, live only on IBM.TV.